Now we look at how we can apply this maximum likelihood estimation principle to the spatial error model. The estimation problem for the spatial error model is actually quite different from the spatial lag model. We have a, let's say, a spatial autoregressive auto error term where the error is a function of its spatial lag, E is a function of lambda WE, and then a remaining error term, which we typically call the idiosyncratic error term. So that means that the error term E is a function of this error term U by means of the inverse Jacobian transformation, the inverse transformation of the matrix I minus lambda W. In principle, this is nothing but a special case of a general non-spherical variance matrix. So non-spherical variance matrix is the case where the off-diagonal elements are non-zero. And as we've seen earlier for the spatial autoregressive model, the diagonal elements are not constant either. So there is um, heteroscedasticity irrespective of the fact whether u the idiosyncratic error has heteroscedasticity or not. So the form of this non-spherical variance matrix you get by substituting the reduced form for E. So the variance is the expected value of E times E prime, the column vector times the row vector. So we replace that by I minus lambda W inverse U times I minus lambda w inverse u prime. And after we work it out, we see this expression, which is sigma squared, a scaling variable parameter, and then the cross product of these two n by n matrices, I minus lambda w prime, I minus lambda w, and the whole thing inverted. So this is a very complicated expression. And um, Recalling our discussion of the specification of spatial models, even though the W, the spatial weights matrix, may be very sparse, suggesting only correlation between immediate neighbors, once we figure out this inverse of this cross product, the resulting matrix is no longer sparse. So we have correlation between neighbors well beyond the ones included in the spatial weights matrix. Now the difference between, another difference between the spatial lag model and the spatial error model is in the spatial lag model we saw that the spatial coefficient, the spatial autoregressive coefficient rho, is of interest in and of itself as a measure of spatial spillover and as a measure of a spatial multiplier. In the spatial error model that's not the case. The parameter lambda is not of interest in and of itself, but it's a nuisance parameter. It matters in terms of the efficiency of the estimate for the beta. So even if we ignore spatial autocorrelation in the error term, ordinarily squares will give a, an unbiased estimate for the betas, but it will not be an efficient estimate. And in fact, if we take the standard approach to estimating the variance, it will be incorrect. So that's really the problem of estimating in the spatial error model. It's a matter of getting the variance covariance matrix right. And after that is just a standard application of feasible, feasible generalized least squares. And in the spatial case, we call this spatially weighted least squares. And we can see why it's called spatially weighted least squares by just kind of writing out the expression for generalized least squares, which is x prime sigma inverse x inverted x prime sigma inverse y. So for our case, our interest is in what the sigma inverse is. And here we're actually quite lucky, because if we go back, we see the variance matrix sigma has this inverse of the cross product. So if we take the inverse of this inverse, we're left back with the original cross product, which simplifies matters, matters greatly. <clears throat> so then the sigmas cancel out, and we 
are left with x prime i minus lambda w prime i minus lambda w times x in the in the main expression. And if we rename our variables x sub l as if you wish a spatially filtered version of the original covariates and y sub l as a spatially filtered version of the original dependent variable then we have a standard least squares regression but it's a least square regression on the spatially filtered variables and in order to carry that out we need to know what the value for lambda is so this is how lambda enters into this pro process we we need to get a consistent estimate for lambda and that will give us then a, a consistent estimate for the betas with a better estimate of the precision of the estimate that takes into account the spatial autocorrelation. And this expression, the spatially weighted least squares, is sometimes also called spatial Cochrane Orcutt in analogy to what is done in time series when one takes the difference, the first differences with the autoregressive parameter in, included. So then to move on to actual maximum likelihood estimation, we use the ex exact same principle as for the spatial lag. Um, we need to get a consistent estimate for lambda, and then we plug that consistent estimate into the expression for the feasible generalized least squares, or our spatially weighted least squares. Uh, maximum likelihood estimation cannot be carried out as a two-step process like in time series. In time series, you take the residuals and then you use an extra regression to get a consistent estimate for the other regressive parameter. In the spatial case, that doesn't work. So in the spatial case, we have to be explicit. And again, because of the dependency, we have to specify the joint uh, likelihood, not the sum of the individual likelihoods for the observations. Our point of departure, again, is a multivariate normal distribution for the error terms. It's a joint density, and the Jacobian is the same form. It's the determinant of i minus lambda w. So the, the rationale is the same as for the spatial lag model. The expression is very similar to that for the spatial lag model, except that the uh, sum of squares of the error terms takes on a slightly different form, namely the spatially filtered uh, variables y and um, x. The Jacobian has the same form as in the spatial lag model. So again, same approach. We specify the joint log likelihood. That's a function of the parameters, and we need to maximize that log likelihood as a function of the parameters. And two steps. First step is the first order conditions, which are the partial derivatives of the likelihood function, and we try to solve those, set them to zero. Luckily, again, for beta and for sigma squared, these are simple functions of the parameter lambda. So once we know lambda, we have an analytical solution for those parameters. However, the uh, condition for lambda is not analytical. It doesn't have an analytical solution. Is this very, very complex trace term you see on the slide. And we won't go to in, in too much detail, but I just want to give you a sense of what's involved. If we write out this right-hand side trace and the left-hand side um, quadratic form, we end up with these expressions in the weights and cross products of the weights and cross products of spatially lagged error terms. So this is very complicated. Luckily, we can uh, substitute the expressions for beta and sigma squared, and we again end up with a concentrated likelihood where we now have a very complex expression of the spatially filtered variables. And keep in mind, each of these spatially filtered variables has a lambda in there. So this is a highly nonlinear function, but luckily only of one uh, parameter. So it can be solved numerically fairly easily. Then we move to the second step. We need to compute the sec second partial derivatives. This gives us the information matrix. 
Again, we see these complicated expressions of w i minus lambda w inverse. We see a lot of traces, but we also see the block diagonal structure, which is the, the standard result. So you see this xl prime xl over sigma squared. That pertains to the precision of the betas. And then the other block on the lower right-hand side pertains to the precision of the parameters of the error term, in this case, lambda and sigma squared. The asymptotic variance matrix is then the inverse of this expression. So the asymptotic variance matrix is not the information matrix, but it's inverse. And this is the classic result, the uh, block diagonal structure. What this means is that the precision of lambda does not matter for the precision of beta. All that matters is that lambda is estimated consistently. That's why it's referred to as a nuisance parameter. So of course, lambda, the value of the lambda affects the precision of beta because the variance of beta will be uh, computed from these spatially filtered variables that include lambda. But the precision of lambda doesn't matter. So this is a, a very useful result that allows us to implement feasible generalized least squares as a form of uh, weighted least squares, spatially weighted least squares. Once we obtain the maximum, uh, a consistent estimate for lambda, in this case the maximum likelihood estimate, estimate for lambda from our first order conditions, we plug it into the weighted least squares and we have a consistent estimate for the betas as well as an estimate of the precision of the betas.